Hi everyone, welcome back to Richard's Tech Tutorials and in today we're going to be talking about the next step in setting up the VLAN for our kids or for my kids in this case. Now in the first episode we went through setting up the TP-Link Omada configuration, creating the VLAN and obviously the VLAN access point, the, the virtual wireless network should I say, I get the term right, uh, for the kids to use and how to make sure that the traffic was just kept within that particular VLAN. So what we're going to be doing today is going to be looking at the Proxmox server that I've got and setting up a VADGuard. Now AdGuard can be run on Raspberry Pi, it can be run on any machine really that's hooked up to the network. I use Proxmox because it just keeps it nice and simple for me. So without further ado, let's get on with that. So we switched over to Proxmox, this is my Proxmox environment. I have a lot more containers sat in here. I've got this all running, well mainly running, should I say, on an N100 box. You know, low power, doesn't take much, you know, doesn't take much electricity, but is more than capable of running all of the virtual containers that I wish. Now I mainly use containers, or LXC containers to be exact, rather than VMs because they're lighter weight. You know, you don't have all the extra overhead of running multiple copies of, of uh, the operating system. So what we're looking at here is the container that I've set up. So it's got 512 meg of memory and eight gig of storage. And that was the minimum that it suggested for this configuration. You can quite happily get away with less, but I thought this will be fine for what we're gonna be doing here. What we have done is under the networking section, so if I click edit, we've configured a static IP address. So in this case, my network being 192.168.0, I picked IP 120, as the static IP address uh, slash 24 for this particular network configuration and set up the, the gateway. Um, and that's it really. And what we're gonna do, we go to the console. I'm gonna log in. Now, I've already gone through and updated this VM with all, sorry, not VM, this container with the latest patches for this particular operating system. I've also installed curl and I'll explain why we need that in a sec. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go over to the AdGuard website. So we can go to the AdGuard website here and you see I'm already on the AdGuard home. So to get to that, you go to products, other products, AdGuard home, which brings you to here. Now, what this is going to do is it's going to allow, it's going to create a DNS server on the network. And you can read through all of the stuff that it does within uh, the, on their website. It's a great little product. Um, but it's going to allow me to set up like safe search and other things for my kids, which is what I want here. So if we click the how to set up, it'll take you through to the GitHub page for this particular thing. And we're going to be using this top one. So I'm just going to copy that here. So you don't have to copy, you just click copy on the end. We're going to go back to the container and we're literally going to paste that in and hit enter. Now I need to log in with root access to do this, because obviously we're setting up a service. That'll go through, download the configure everything that we need, and job done. So you'll see here, we've got our starter URL, so HTTP port 3000. And what we're gonna do is we'll go to this page here, we're gonna paste that in, and we hit enter. And we hit enter and, ah, yeah. It's not 192.168, it's, it's 192.168.0.120 colon 3000. As you can see, I've already done this once. We click that and off we go. So yeah, I copied the wrong URL. It wasn't 127, it was this one down here, as you can see. Obviously 127.0.1 is a local. If you're just doing this on a machine that has a browser already installed, then you can do that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna run through this, we're gonna get started. We want to attach it to, now you can do it to all, but I'm going to be a bit more specific. Now, if you go and change the configuration of this box, then you'll have to come and do some setup here. So for this, you could leave it as all interfaces, but make sure you set your DNS to be uh, set to the ne the network port that you're going to have showing, sorry, network, the network address that you're going to have showing outside for the clients to access. So we'll just pick the same thing on both. We already have a static IP address because we said we went through that. Username admin, it doesn't have to be admin. You can call it whatever you like. And just make sure it's something you can remember. Uh, so we'll set that up. Excuse my password manager kicking in there. 
And that's it. So what we're going to do is we're going to click next and we're going to open the dashboard. Not now. We're going to log in with admin and the password. Let's get rid of the ad blocker. Uh, not now. Okay, so here is AdGuard. There are various things you can set up on here. And what I'm going to do is we'll switch over to my, the, my live one because it makes it a little bit easier. But if we just run through some basic settings first. So things like your DNS settings. If you've got a preferred DNS server that you wish to use, this is where you will come and put that and you can decide how it's going to run. If you're not sure, just leave it as is. This configuration works fine. Um, things like the encryption settings. Again, if you're not sure, leave them alone. Um, if you're going to run a DHCP server, I'm not in this case, you can you can set that all up here. I'm going to be using the Omada DHCP server in this case. So again, I'm not setting that up. Client settings, we'll, we'll talk about this when we show you the live one, but this is where you can set up for the different devices you have access in the network, what kind of levels you want to set up for there. By default, I have it set to block everything. So when a new um, device comes along, I haven't accidentally left it open, but you'll see what we're doing for that in a minute. Now for filters, we'll talk through block lists, allow lists, rewrites, um, block services and custom filter rules. But the block services is the first one I would suggest you configure. So these are all the services that you can block with just a simple, you know, like that. And that was it. That would block that service. Um, it's completely seamless. So we've got Apple streaming, that's for Apple Music and, and you know, Apple TV, things like that. Um, but these are all unblocked at the moment. So what I do on the global settings is set block all. And then for the devices that I want to allow certain things for, I then unblock those services. And it's just an easier way of doing this. But if there's one you want to have open for everybody to use, like for example, let's say like us you're using apple music you can unblock that for everybody so at least that's available and apple streaming is for you know sorry amazon streaming is for amazon music and so on so we hit save on that one and that that's configured and you can then see a query log of anybody that comes in you'll see what they've been accessing and from there you'll show it so what we're going to do now is going to switch over to my my hope the my live DNS server that I'm using for my kids. Now, if you can remember back in the first episode, I said I punched holes in the rules for configuring the system. So let's just come out of that for a sec. For the for the rules that go through. Um, and that was so that I could, from my network, or should I say from the main network, access the DNS, the, the AdGuard home on the kids network. And if you've, got any, if you've got any problems or need any help with that, just put some comments in the videos and we can run through it. I'll do another video on how to go about, go about setting that up. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to, we'll come back to that in a sec. So for me, it's kidsdns.donmo.org.uk and that will then take me through to theirs. I've just done that because I can't remember all the different IP addresses. So I've set up the DNS servers on my main network as well. So we've got, a list of the devices, so their their Chromebooks, their phones, uh, iMacs that they have access to, so an old 27 inch iMac, still works great, they use that as well. So if we go through to settings and we click on client settings, so for example, if I open up Ben's iPhone, for example, we can see I've, I've marked it as a phone, I've made every device have a static IP address when they're at home and I've done that through the Omada interface. If you use AdGuard as your DNS server, you can just pick a list of the actual machines and do it that way. But this is what I was choosing to do. Now from here, we've got the, the standard settings. So I said use global settings. Now, this uh, tool gets updated on a regular basis and you'll see I've got one missing from the safe search. That was because when I set this up, that wasn't an option. So they do, they do update things. So what we can do here is on the block services, I blocked all, so I took the global, I could have just used the global one, but I, I, in this case, I blocked all and then I unblocked the thing. So for example, Amazon, Amazon streaming services, Apple, I let him go onto the Amazon website if he so wishes. Kako, that's for him to talk to his granny um, and various other things that he has access to on his phone. 
but generally I've kept it as locked down as possible. So it's got access to YouTube, things like that, all the things that they, they particularly want access to. But it just stops them going onto weird and wonderful sites without you knowing about it. And for their, for example, for the, for the iMac, if I go into the block services, we have a slightly more locked down version of that particular one, because I don't want them using things like Snapchat or WhatsApp from the Mac itself. I want them to be focusing on their homework. Now, I can, if I so wish, if we could just come out of that. If we go into this one, let's say I just want to allow them access, I can pause I can pause it briefly and we can put things like a schedule on. So if they've got particular times that you want them to be focused in on their homework, you can set up schedules outside of that. So it could open it up for them. Um, and you can also specify for different clients, different DNS servers. So for example, if you've got a particular client that you want to have access to a different set of system services, you can do that as well. As I said, it's a great tool for really configuring your network for your kids. So let's say, for example, let's go to the filters. So if I look at my DNS block list, we get two standard ones. You'll see these when you set up Agar Home, but I also created another one for um, anything that I've captured that I don't want them having access to. So some of the, there's some game sites that have lots of JavaScript and things that for playing silly games, and I've decided to block those here. And I've just put those in the GitHub repository. I'll put a link to the GitHub repo in the description so if you want to use it all you do is you just come in and add block list and you can say it's from a cut from a list and you say where, where you what you want it to be so you just set up a custom custom list from within here so you, you'll see just run through that now as you can see here i've got access to seeing everything that they've queried i can look at the stuff that's been blocked and then maybe the stuff that's gone through so the allowed I tend to look at the allowed stuff and then see if there's anything I've missed. Now, let's say, for example, I wanted to block Spotify, in this case, for this particular client. So I can say block, which will block for everybody, block for this client only, or disallow this client. So if I wish to block, I would just click block, and it would then add that to my, if I go to the filters, the block custom filter rules, there we go. Now. I put in some wildcards, so if you know how to do um, the wildcards, if you're not sure, there's a there's a website that tells you how to do some re regular expressions. There we go, that's the word I was looking for. So on this particular one, I blocked anything that has the word game in it, battle, web store. That was to stop them downloading stuff from the Apple or the Google Play Store and running it that way. And then VPN, so it stopped them getting around the um, configuration that I had. So. And as you can see here, we've added some in, and these ones with the at 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 the beginning are the ones that have then been opened back up again. So if you've got something that got caught by one of the other wildcard ones, you can put in an at at against it, and it will then allow that to go through. There we go. And that's really it from that configuration perspective. So that's setting up AdGuard. Have a play by using things like Proxmox, you can back up the system and make sure if you make some changes, you can roll it back quite easily. Now, once you've done that and you've got that up and running, you're happy with it, what you need to do is you need to come back to your settings. So system settings, remember when we created the wireless network. So if I go to LAN, not wireless network, the virtual network, and we set up the kids network. So if you come back in here, what you'll need to do is under the DNS servers, click manual and put in the IP address of your AdGuard configuration. So for me, that's 192.168.10.2, uh, and that's what I've got here. So that's that kid's DNS. And then obviously save that, go and reboot all the machines, or it will kick in eventually once they get a new IP address from the system, but just do, just do a reboot, and that will then sort that problem out. And that's it. So that's what I use for the DNS server for my kids. I've set up safe search. So if I come back to here, sorry, under the general settings, I've set safe search for all of the different things. So what that does is it just sticks an, an additional part to the URL when they do a search to make sure that the system doesn't give them back stuff that they shouldn't really be um, finding on, on, on the various different things. I've set the log retention to be seven days and you know statistics to be 24 hours. But uh, that's really it. So 
hopefully that was useful uh, in the next episode we're going to look at the multicast dns which again requires setting up another linux server uh, on my proxmox instance but that's actually quite simple as well so that's just a matter of setting that up so please come back uh, as i said as always i always forget to say this like subscribe uh, leave some comments if you wish me to talk about anything else in more detail run through some settings i'm more than happy to do more videos on this so thanks guys and hopefully i'll see you in the next episode <laughs>